Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. You may notice a voice change for the opening of this episode, and that's because it's me, Mike Bayer, CEO and co-founder of Vacation Rental Formula. And before I hand over to Heather to get started, I just want to let you know, make sure you listen right to the end, because we have an amazing promotion for our Black Friday 2019 boot camp. So stay tuned. I'll talk to you soon. This is the Vacation Rental Success Podcast, keeping you up to date with news, views, information and resources on this rapidly changing short-term rental business. I'm your host, Heather Bayer, and with 25 years of experience in this industry, I'm making sure you know what's hot, what's not, what's new and what will help make your business a success. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. I am super delighted to be back with you once again, still in Alabama at the moment, just for the last week before we head home for the winter and Christmas. When I say the winter, we're only going to be staying around until probably mid-January and then head back down to Texas and spend... February, March, down uh, to the west of San Antonio, which is where we were at the same time last year. So really looking forward to that. I don't mind getting a little bit of snow and ice because I know it's only for a few weeks and it will be very, very nice getting back to my house for a little while. I know how fortunate I am to have this contrast, to be able to do this and to spend November in the sun and February in the warmth. And hopefully, Texas, you're going to be warm for me this February and March. You're a little cool this year. So i am got my fingers crossed for next year. So today I'm going to talk about content marketing. And this is a solo episode. And I know I, I keep saying Jason's coming along and going to be talking about digital marketing. And I think I might have said that for the past couple of weeks. But what we've been trying to do is to tie in the content of the podcast on the day it's published with the topic of office hours. Now, if you don't know what office hours is, we'd love you to come along, by the way. Office hours is an hour long Zoom meeting that is open to absolutely everybody. And we do it every single Wednesday at two o'clock Eastern, 1 p.m. Central. And most of the time it's myself and Mike and Jason, but occasionally it's just two of us. Occasionally it's just one of us and an invited guest. That's more of what we're going to be doing in the future. So when we do those Zoom meetings, we like to tie in the theme of them to the podcast of that day, which is a long way around of saying that Jason isn't available this week. Jason isn't available. If you're tuning in on the Wednesday that this is published, Jason is not available today. So, but I will be. And next week I'm not available and Jason is around. So it seemed more appropriate to leave the podcast I did with Jason about your digital marketing strategy for 2020. I was going to leave that to next week. So although I won't be here because I'll be on my way home from Tennessee back to Ontario, but Mike and Jason will be there to answer your questions on digital marketing. So please think about coming along, letting us know if you'd like the connection information to get into that Zoom meeting. As I say, it is entirely free. It's generally myself, Mike and Jason talking about the topic of the day and also answering questions from the people who come along. Now, you can come along completely anonymously. You don't have to say who you are, but it's so much better if you do show up and you can show yourself on video. It's not compulsory to switch your video on, but it really is nice to see you. It really is. And I love it that there are attendees who come to every Zoom meeting that we have. They always have their video on. And, you know, I can see your faces while I'm talking. It's really, really nice. And then if you've got something to say, then we just open up the mic for you and you say whatever you want to. And over the course of the next few months, we're probably going to start up some hot seats. So, 
If anybody has a pressing issue that they want to discuss, then we are going to open up the mic for you, for you to talk about your problem. And then whether it's myself or, or Jason, Mike, or an invited guest, we're going to try and resolve and untangle that issue for you. So please come along this afternoon if you're listening on the day of publication, because I'm going to be I'm going to be talking about content marketing. And one of the reasons I've I've chosen this topic is that I've just recorded a video webinar of a presentation I did a year or so back, a year or so back, 2018, in fact, at one of the VRMA conferences. And it was called The Art of Being Seen in an Increasingly Distracted World. Because unless you are fixated on staying on the Airbnb platform only or staying on the home away platform only, you need to have a website if you're interested in doing any direct booking. However, there is absolutely no use whatsoever having a website if all you're going to do is to focus on your property because you may as well just have it. Nobody's going to come to your site and book on your site if all there is is your property. When I say nobody, maybe you get around it, You somebody finds you somehow, finds your site and wants to save the Airbnb service fee, I guess, by booking direct. But, you know, it's really unlikely to happen because there is so much out there. How the heck are they going to find you? So that's what I concentrate on in this webinar that I've, I've just produced. Mike's going to talk about it at the end because I've done four separate webinars that are going to be going up onto the um, Vacation Rental Formula membership site. So they'll be available for all our members there to see very shortly. However, we are offering them for sale as well. So Mike's going to come and talk about that in a while. I've done four separate webinars and Mike and Jason have done a couple as well on digital marketing. So it's a really nice package. But while I was doing this one on the art of being seen in an increasingly distracted world, it got me thinking, in fact, about how it's all changed in the past two years, even since I did that presentation and the growth in this business. What I'm hearing from people about, you know, when Five years or so ago, they were one of a couple of hundred properties in their area, and now they're one of several thousand in their area. I mean, how can you compete? You know, how can you get the attention of the audience, even if you're just on Airbnb or HomeAway? Unless you're doing something spectacular, you're not going to be top of, of the listings. You are less likely to be seen these days. So, If you're interested in staying in this business, you've got to do something about it. And I firmly believe that content marketing is the way to go because people are out there looking for information, not looking for information on your property. They don't want to know about your property. They want to, at first anyway, they want to know about the location, what they can see when they come to visit, what they can do, what activities there are where they can rent a bicycle, where they can do a whale watching trip. What's the best whale watching trip? What's the weather like in a particular month? Are there bugs? Are there, are there animals? Are there snakes? People have questions, a ton of questions, and they are out there on Google, on forums, on Facebook groups, asking those questions. And this is where you come in, okay? This is where your local knowledge your expertise will drive you to being the source that they want to find. And it's going to drive you to being the source that they do find if you do it right. So if you're a regular listener to the podcast, you know that I have been recommending some books. And I started recommending book a week and, and it just got too much because I had to go reread all the books that I was recommending and then, uh, and then post them. So we, we've gone into a book per month. Now, this one, I think I did mention one earlier in November, but now we're just approaching the end of the month. I'm going to recommend once again, because I, I have talked about this book before, 
but it is of primary interest to anybody who wants to un- really, really understand what content marketing is. And that is They Ask, You Answer by Marcus Sheridan. Now, Marcus Sheridan started his career in pools, in you know swimming pools and hot tubs. And what he found was that as he was going around on sales calls, and meeting people that they had a ton of questions. And he was answering these questions over and over again. And he came to the realization that everybody had the same questions, that they had the same worries about price. They had the same worries about quality. They had the same worries about what the support was going to be like after they'd bought the product. But nowhere on their website did it answer any of these questions. So he set about collecting or brainstorming every single question that there had ever been on pools and spas and created content for the website based on the answers to those questions. And, you know, it's, it's all about trust because one of the questions that I, I'm asked a lot is, you know, we talk about direct booking, but often property owners and managers are hearing from guests saying, well, I don't want to book direct with you because Airbnb and HomeAway are telling me that it's far safer to book through them. They have all these safety mechanisms in place. They have vetted every property. Yeah, no, that, that, that doesn't happen. But these guests have drunk the Kool-Aid. They honestly believe that it's safer to book through one of the big online travel agencies than it is to book direct with an owner or manager. They've been led to believe that they're far more likely to be scammed if they book direct. And that's Sentiment is something that you know, almost goes viral. Somebody gets sc- scammed somewhere and the OTAs are going to jump on it and it, will, it justifies their claim that they are the safest. So going back to Marcus Sheridan and they ask you answer, he says too, just even with selling swimming pools, it's all about trust. And the way that you can generate trust is by deeply, deeply understanding your customer base and providing the answers to all the questions and concerns that they have. So let's think a bit about questions because guest questions are your treasure trove. They are the source of all the content you would ever want to create because that's, a, that's another big question I hear. Oh, I don't know what to write about. I don't know what to say. What is, what's important? Is anybody going to read what I write? Well, you don't know if they are going to actively seek you out and read everything you've written. But can you imagine if somebody, and I've done it this morning, and I've keyed a question into Google and it was what we call a long tailed question. So it wasn't something like Ontario cottage rentals or Florida panhandle rentals. It was just a longer question. How do I do a particular thing? And the results that came up were not from mega companies. They were from much smaller companies who had gone out of their way to create the content answering the questions that I had. And if you think about it, and I've said this many times before, the OTAs, they may have a gazillion billion dollars, however much people say they they have to spend on marketing. They don't have enough to write content on absolutely every location in the world. They don't have enough to spend on content answering questions about your specific property or an issue that somebody might have when they come and stay in your location. So customers will teach you which questions you need to answer in order for them to take the next step in their journey. And the journey is towards buying that vacation. And if you're able to answer their key questions, you are far more likely for them to convert with you rather than go back to the OTA. 
So Sheridan writes, become the most trusted voice in your industry. Listen, teach, and problem solve to earn buyer's trust. So let's talk for a moment about where you find those questions. You know, I'm saying that guests have a mass of questions they're answering. They're asking about your location, but where do you find those questions? I'm just going to give you four immediate places you can go to to find those questions. The first one, of course, is is Google. And one of the best things to do and is, is just put in a question, one single question that guests might ask of you. And we have a lot of questions that come into us in our property management company. It's things like, where can I go fishing? Where can I go fishing if I come to your cottage? So we put into Google fishing in Ontario because you start with a general term like that because up up comes the big fishing companies, the Ministry of Natural Resources, uh, anybody else who is involved, fishing outfitters, marinas, that sort of thing, come way up at the top. Ignore those, go right down to the bottom of the page and you'll see a section that says searches related to fishing in Ontario or whatever general question you've asked. And that that gives you information on all the other questions that people have asked that are related to that general question. And then you really start to drill down into the questions that people are actually asking. So when we did this exercise, we came down to a much more specific key phrase, which was spring fishing in Ontario. And then we came down because we we keyed in spring fishing in Ontario and went all the way down to searches related to that phrase. And we found out that a lot of people are searching for spring walleye fishing in Ontario. So easy. Now we have a topic. That's probably a topic for a blog post. And in a few moments, I'm going to go and talk about different types of content, content that you can create and how you can take the general query and break it down into smaller pieces of information that are related to that general query and how we do that in pages and guides, in audio, in video and in blog posts. But I just want to go into the other three places you can go and find questions. TripAdvisor forums, and I don't know if you're aware, you may not spend much time on TripAdvisor, but TripAdvisor have a number of forums for different areas. And usually they're, they're larger areas. So you can go and look at Google and go for Hawaii, uh, TripAdvisor Hawaii Forum, Travel Forum, I think it's called. And that brings up every question that anybody has ever asked Trip ad, on TripAdvisor about a location. And when you get there on the right-hand side, there's a long list of the most popular questions that have been asked. And that is a terrific source of questions. I don't know what's there now, but when I last looked, it was some of the most popular ones were, what's the best whale watching outfit in Maui? How can I arrange a wedding in Hawaii? There's questions on scuba diving and snorkeling. There's questions on gluten-free restaurants. I mean, this is a great, you, you've got all, every, everybody listening to this you all need to write a piece for a piece of content for your website on gluten-free restaurants in your area gluten-free or keto or because this is the big thing this you know people are going away on vacation they want to eat in the same way as they do at home and the gluten-free industry has completely blown up so you need to get out there and be telling them where to find the best gluten-free restaurants in your area so that's just one tip of many that I found on TripAdvisor forums. So another place to go and find questions that people are asking asking is on general forums and Facebook groups. Now, a lot of different areas have Facebook groups devoted to them, to visitors. Somebody set up a Facebook group and I know I'm down in Gulf Shores at the moment. There is an Orange Beach and Gulf Shores Facebook group. And a lot of people coming down here will post their questions on the best places to eat, uh, the best places to go and get fresh fish, 
Uh, where can they see dolphins? Can they take their dogs for walks on the beach? That sort of thing. So go to those Facebook groups and start mining for questions on there. And all you do at the start is just make your list of questions. You know, take a day or if you can't manage a day, take several hours out and just make it question time and go and look for the questions that people are asking. And you'll find that a lot of the same questions are going to come up on Facebook groups or in TripAdvisor forums and also on Google. So you can see that people are out there asking the same questions over and over again. And what you want to do is deliver the information to them in a way that's going to come up in that first page search of Google. Your own email inbox do not forget your own email inbox because I know from ours, uh, from our property management company, we are inundated with questions. And I mean, one of the top questions is what fish are in the lakes? So we need to be out there answering that question and then answering all the peripheral questions or the questions related to it that, that come in as well. So... I know it's tough to actually go back and look at old emails and find out if there are specific questions, which is why I left that one to last. But now you know that you have to start recording every question you get in from your guests, then you start doing that now. It's be amazing how quickly your store of questions grows. So Sheridan then says, once you've got your list of questions... You have to create a piece of content for every single question. And that I can, you know, I know that's a really overwhelming thing to do. However, it does take a good amount of your time, but there are ways around it as well. You don't have to. And if you're not a writer, you can find somebody else to write about these topics you can find somebody in a, um, a writing course in a local college who's looking for, for an internship to, to write pieces of content for you, I would strongly recommend not outsourcing to India or the Philippines. There's a lot of people out there who say that they will write this content for you. Tried it myself a long time ago. I would not go down that route again. You want to try to find somebody who's, who's local, maybe somebody in a journalism and writing course who would be really interested in getting the experience in writing some blog posts for you. You can find videos you can find videos on YouTube that you can embed. You can embed the YouTube code into your website. So that's a great way of bringing in some content to ask some questions that is not going to cause you to take a huge amount of time over it. And one example is that we, we often get questions from our guests who say, oh, I noticed there's a stand-up paddleboard, but I have no idea how to use it. How do you actually stand up on one? So rather than try and write this out, because we know that how to stand up on a stand-up paddleboard is a very, very popular question. So we've just found a couple of videos online, how to stand up on, a, on an SUP, and we have embedded the code into a longer blog post. So the blog post is about water activities, and one section is on stand-up paddleboarding. And we say, you know, we're often asked how to stand up on a board. So watch this video. And we can find that how to stand up on a paddleboard in Ontario, you know, it works from an SEO perspective with the long tail keywords. So you could also spin it around a bit and make some audio, do an interview with somebody in your area about a topic that people are asking questions about. And, you know, once you once you got your audio equipment, it really, really is easy just to do a quick Skype call or you can just you can record it on your phone. And then once you figure out how to get that audio into your website and there's a ton of places where you can go and find that information, then you have another piece of content via audio. And I've I've talked before about starting your own travel podcast, which after you get over the initial work of doing so, it can be a very nice source of traffic for you. Now, 
the other part of content creation, another place you can put this content is, of course, in a static page on your website. So once it's there, it's evergreen, it's not going to go away. You can create guides, you can create downloadable PDFs that make a nice giveaway. So if you have a, a lead page on your website, a landing page, and somebody is looking for something in specific specific. We've had one on our site for years and it's a, it's a packing list. It's a vacation rental packing list. And I'm probably going to up the game with that in a while because it needs to be revamped, but it has driven a lot of traffic to our website because people are out on Google saying, oh, I don't know what to take for my vacation rental or my short-term rental. And we have the packing list for them. So once you have that content off and running, you can begin to develop it. And I I urge you not to, you know, don't just look at this, this massive questions and think how overwhelming this is. How can we do this? I'm going to do another podcast in a couple of weeks about 12 week planning rather than setting goals for for a year, but just simply a 12 week plan because we're, we're starting to implement that in our company where we just simply look at the next, although we do have a vision for the future, we take it in 12 week stages. And this is what you need to do with your content marketing, because you have to take it down from this, this huge overwhelmment of a hundred or so questions that you want to answer and look at it practically. You know, how, what are the most important ones? What are the ones that are being asked more often than others? And how can I deliver the content in a way that's going to capture them in as quickly as possible? So we probably take maybe a dozen questions over a course of a 12 week period and answer them. Now, if you've got more people in your company, you want to really bring everybody on board so that they can help you out with this. So we're not just talking about questions about your area, about gluten-free restaurants or dog-friendly beaches. You also want to address any elephant you may have in the room, because this is one of the things that erodes trust. And people say, I went to this property and it was not as described or something was not mentioned, which should have been. And you will find that if within your content, you are addressing the elephant in the room about a specific property that builds more trust and confidence in you. So when I'm talking about elephant in the room, your elephant problem, here's a couple. Neighbours are really close. You know, you don't want somebody turning up at a property and finding that there are really close neighbours. So you want to talk about how your property is located or, you know, how all properties are located in an area. I know where I am in Gulf Shores at the moment, if I head down towards Fort Morgan, on one side of the road, on the on the uh, ocean side, there's just a, so many of these houses on stilts and they all look very pretty, but they are really, really close together. There is no gaps between them. There's no real sense of privacy or yard. If I was writing content about that area, then I'd be posting photographs of not just one property, but the whole area and letting people know what it looks like so they know what to expect. Another example is is we've we're writing content about bugs. We're writing content about blackfly and mosquito and deerfly. All those lovely lovely critters that come and join us in cottage country in the summer. And I think we're throwing in ants as well because ants was a huge problem this year. So we just talk about what people should expect. You know, because people are they they do ask that question. And we hear it a lot. Are there going to be bugs? Are there going to be mosquitoes? Are we going to be bothered by black fly? And we address that elephant in the room up front and say, yes, if you come to cottage country towards the end of May, beginning of June, there are or there may very well be significant amount of black fly. And this is how you deal with it, you know, using bug sprays and and that type of thing. Mosquitoes, people have an odd idea about mosquitoes. They think they are there. Uh, I'm going to bother you from the moment you set foot out the door till the time you come back in. Well, in fact, that's not quite the case. And 
you know, you need to avoid them first thing in the morning and at dusk. But in general, they're not around during the hottest part of the day. But we want to educate people. And that is what this is all about. It's about educating and sharing super useful information. So if you have an elephant in the room, if you have a steep approach to your property, or if there is always ongoing construction, address it. Let people know well in advance and just do it in a piece of content so you can answer those questions really, really easily. Now, once you've got this, all this content on your site, how are you going to get it out there? It's not good enough just to post a couple of pieces of content, maybe a video, maybe a blog post, and then sit back and wait for people to find it. They just, they won't at the outset because it takes Google a while to know that that information is there and to put it further up in the rankings. So you want to physically get out there and tell people where your content is. So this is what I often see is that many people look at social media and website content as two separate things, whereas in fact they work together. So once you have your content in place, you then go out onto social media and tell people where it is. So you may go to Facebook or to Instagram, to Twitter, and you post a really good picture. You write a little note to say, uh, I'm, I'm just thinking off the top of my head at the moment. Let's say you're thinking about you've done a, some content pieces on getting married in Maui. And one of the content pieces is how do I get flowers for my wedding in Maui? Where do I find a florist? So you've got a really nice piece on that. And you go out to Instagram and you post a beautiful picture of somebody in a wedding gown with a beautiful bouquet of flowers on a beach in Maui. And you put a link in that to your blog post. Simple as that. So I'm not going to go much beyond that because it really is that simple. You write your content and then you drive the traffic to it. Don't just let your content sit there and, and expect that people are going to find it. You have to drive your traffic to it. You've got to share your content as widely as you can. So I, I strongly recommend Twitter. As, as a place to drive content. I know that Instagram is an amazing place for driving content. Facebook is, is, a little, is a little different. Facebook groups and start spamming them with your content if you haven't written, it, written or contributed much before. But there you are. That's it really in a nutshell. Find the questions that people are asking. Go to different places, find the questions, brainstorm the questions, create the content and then send the traffic to that content. So this is something that, that me and my team are working on very, very hard over the winter um, is, is finding out these questions. I mean, we know a lot of them after 17 years in the business, we, we hear these quest questions over and over again, but we really haven't been addressing them. We haven't been writing the content that answers those questions. So that's something we will definitely be doing. So I'd love to hear from you if you have some ideas on content you could write or any other ideas on where you find those questions. And, and I'd love to hear from you. So don't forget, go and get They Ask, You Answer by Marcus Sheridan. I'll put the links in the show notes and you can go and check that out. I love this book and I've read it several times now and I always come up with something new and original to do from it. So as I said, I've created a video on this topic, The Art of Being Seen in an Increasingly Distracted World. And Mike is going to come along in a few moments and talk a little bit more about that and where you can get hold of that. So happy content creation, folks. I think it, it's fun. It's interesting. And, and you can derive a lot of traffic and conversion from it. A couple of other things I'm going to put in the show notes, and that's links to smokymountains.com. 
which has always been my go-to place for you know, one of the best sites ever for creating content because you need to go to these other sites and see how these people are doing it and how they're making such a success of it. And that should give you some inspiration. So I'll put that link to smokymountains.com, also a link to Pikes Point in the Adirondack Mountains because the owner of that site uses video and a ton of video. YouTube channels, that's something else I didn't bring up. Maybe that's a topic of another podcast. The other thing that's going to be in that webinar that I've created is a short explanation on what you need for doing audio, for, for doing a podcast creation or just simple audio and the things that you need to do very simple video and where to upload it and how to use it. So as I say, Mike's coming along in a second to talk about that and the other videos that we've produced. And I will pop in just at the end, just to wrap up and say goodbye. Hi, it's Mike Bayer back again, and I hope you enjoyed that episode. As I mentioned at the top of the show, we're very excited to announce our 2019 Black Friday Boot Camp. This is the very first time we're running a promotion like this, and I think you're going to find it of immense value to you and your vacation rental business. So what we're doing is on Friday, the 29th of November, which is Black Friday, starting at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to be providing six live training sessions for you online. So beginning at 11 a.m., our first session is called The Secret Advantage, where you're going to learn the four categories of secret service data, 10 low or no cost experiences you can create for your guests, and the data mining questions you need to ask so you know ahead of time what it is that your customers like and want before they even ask. This one is going to be a real game changer to allow you to impress your guests and wow your guests before they even arrive at your property. Session two, which is going to be at 1 p.m., is going to be how to create guest ambassadors one touch point at a time. The great takeaways from this are going to be the touch points where you can turn guests from, from being just interested to being committed. The dripping tap technique for creating excitement, why specific images on your website and listings can increase conversions, and ways to turn problems into opportunities for positive reviews. Then, at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, the art of being seen in an incre increasingly distracted world. This is going to be a great one to help you stand out from your competition, especially as times are getting more challenging with more and more businesses competing for your guests. So you're going to find out how to find out the questions travelers are asking, a four-step process for delivering multimedia information, what you need for audio and video production, and how easy it is to create relevant content. Session four is going to be at 5 p.m., getting new owners and keeping them. This is one for your early stage property managers or anybody who's looking to bring on new owners to their vacation rental agency. We're going to teach you how to create a powerful information package, the referral methods that bring a stream of new inquiries, the five keys to attracting new owners, and the three proven methods for keeping them. Then at 7 p.m. Eastern Time is session five, where we get really into the good stuff. Book Direct Tech Stack is going to help you to find out exactly what kind of products and services you need to ensure that you are fully set up to accept direct bookings. So you'll discover the top tool for managing 80% of your business. What is available to help you with your team and guest communications and how to keep track of your data all in one spot. And then following that is the one that everybody's been asking for. At 9 p.m. Eastern Time, Session 6 is going to be how we save the summer for our rental agency. Now, if you're a frequent podcast listener, you would have remembered we had an episode, How We Saved Heather's Agency Summer, and increased her bookings dramatically um, in 2019. It was noted across the short-term rental industry that there was a major shift in rental bookings in 2019. But by September 1st, we had secured for Heather's agency slightly above return totals from the previous year when it looked like the summer was going to be lost. So you're going to learn the single most underutilized resource in your marketing arsenal, how to get started with paid traffic and win with a great return on investment, and what you can do today to stop people leaving your booking page. And lastly, how to master the guest journey and understand how to get your traffic to book time and time again. We're providing all six of these sessions for you absolutely free if you attend live. Now, we completely understand you have incredibly busy schedules and you probably can't afford to sit around all day on a Friday to watch every one of these sessions. 
So we are making the replays purchasable. And if you purchase your replays before 11 a.m. on Friday the 29th, you'll get a 20% off discount. So to find out more, head across to Vacation Rental Formula forward slash Black Friday Bootcamp and make sure you get your registration in today. And if you want to purchase your replays, make sure you get them before 11 a.m. on Black Friday because you, you want to save that 20%. Okay, well, thanks for listening, and we look forward to seeing you on our Black Friday Bootcamp. Well, thanks for that, Mike. That's great. I'm so pleased that we've been able to put this together. You know, I've, I've done so many presentations over the last few years, and might do them to an audience of, I don't know, anywhere from from 60 to 150 people. And the content is great. And I really wanted to share it out with many others, you know, those people who can't get to these conferences. So that's, that's one of the reasons we decided to take the slides that we'd done for the presentations and then put some audio to them and actually work through them, make sure you've got current and up-to-date information. So if you decide to go take advantage of that, then you are going to have a massive amount of information. And of course, if you're a member of Vacation Rental Formula, then it's going to be inside the Formula membership site. So you can just go and check that out. Probably not for another week or so until we've got this out on uh, Black Friday. So, or Cyber Monday, I'm never sure which is which. Um, all I know is that I'll be heading home that weekend and uh, on my way back to Ontario and a little bit of snow. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed the piece about content marketing and that you are feeling inspired to go and do some and go answer those questions. Uh, as I said, I'd love you to get in touch with us come and join us on the Zoom call. I will be talking about different types of content and how to get it out to people. And really um, talking about question on how do you create trust with these guests who are being told that basically we're an untrustworthy bunch. So I think it's really important that we deal with that head on. So that's it uh, for me. It will definitely be Jason next week. I hope you look forward to that one just as much. It's been a pleasure as ever being with you. If there's anything you'd like to comment on, then join the conversation on the show notes for the episode at vacationrentalformula.com. We'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to being with you again next week.